nope, it says Goosey. But hey, that's something. You don't meet a natural born vault dweller every day. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're taking a deep dive into the Fallout franchise. Open up those Pip Boys and put all your skill points into science because today we're separating scientific fact from fiction. Oh gosh. Number 10, Mutations. A bunch of us got stuck out here in the world and got a full on blast of heat and radiation. Turned us into a pack of walking corpses. In the world of Fallout, it's commonly understood that radiation can cause genetic mutations in humans and in animals. Broadly speaking, that's true in real life as well, although Fallout's version of mutation uses a bit of artistic license. reality, radiation-induced genetic mutations are complex and virtually always bad. Radiation exposure can and does alter DNA. But think less turning you into an immortal ghoul and more causing cancer and potential birth defects in your future children. Radiation-induced mutations are random in the real world and can affect any part of the genome. What precisely happens next depends on many factors, including the type of radiation, dose, and duration. In Fallout, meanwhile, mutations are generally generally much more predictable and can grant superhuman abilities as well as dramatic physical changes, which is just science fiction all over. I was born in the FEV chambers. A super mutant? I certainly am not. I prefer the term metahuman. Yeah. Number 9. Energy Weapons Vault dwellers may find themselves short on bullets in the wasteland, but conveniently, the universe of Fallout is replete with an arsenal of energy weapons. From Gatling lasers to plasma rifles, directed energy weapons are staples in the game and show. Perhaps fortunately though, the streets of the real world are not also flooded with the same. In our lives, such futuristic firearms can't currently be produced at scale. The technology needed requires an incredible amount of money, as in Pentagon-level money. So why bother when conventional weapons can do the same general job for much less cash? The physical limitations too are prohibitive. From heat loss and heavy weight to beam control and power costs, genuine everyday energy weapons don't give enough bang for the buck. Even if, in Fallout, they're all the rage. Number 8. Contaminated Food and Water Remember how good food used to taste? <sighs> Blam co mac and cheese. Ice cream and apple pie. <laughs> Readers of the Wasteland Survival Guide know that food and water can be as dangerous as a yaogwai. Essentially, all food and water in the wild will be irradiated. In the games, that's no biggie. It'll heal you or feed you for just a small rad hit, which you can heal later. But unsurprisingly, in real life, irradiated food and water presents a much larger risk to your health. Radiation creates something called URPs, or unique radiolytic products in food. By consuming these substances, you'd be granting them a direct line towards mutating your DNA. At high enough levels then, URPs can leave a person with acute radiation sickness, organ damage, and they can even lead to death. So all of us here highly recommend that you avoid that tin of irradiated cram. <coughs> Number 7. Power Armor What kind of model is that? It's the T-60. This may come as something of a surprise, but power armor actually is real. That being said, don't expect any hulking T-60s in the here and now just yet. War never changes, but technology does, slowly. That in mind. Current iterations of real-world wearable exoskeletons are mainly designed to help soldiers and first responders carry heavy loads by hand. They're less power armor and more power loader. Still, there are predictions for much more to come. Protective plating and combat uses could be next, although debates over practicality rage. Knight Titus of the Brotherhood of Steel, stand down or be cut down. As it stands, Power Armor's applications are limited. The weight constraints of heavy materials like steel or the durability constraints of light materials like aluminum are both significant problems. More importantly, however, is the lack of long-lasting power supplies. We don't have any fusion cores lying around in the real world. Rule number one, read the manual. 
Number six, underground vaults. I know that it can't have been easy for you up here, what with all the murder and, and the dirt. But the mission of the vaults should be important to everyone. And why is that? In some respects, Vault Tech got the science right. Shelters really do need to be underground. The soil absorbs the ambient radiation, protecting the structure and the people inside. Airflow would be an issue, but a surmountable one. In reality, what's known as a Kearney air pump can provide a steady supply of breathable air, pump out CO2, and keep radiation at acceptable levels. The real issue, though, is the time. Typically, such shelters are not meant to be long-term solutions to humanity's survival. It's hard to imagine Imagine a large enough stockpile of food and water to sustain a whole community over generations. Welcome, neighbors from Vault 32. I am Hank McLean, overseer of Vault 33. In real life, fallout shelters are generally to help a small group of people hopefully survive for a few weeks or so. But in the game and show, there's no telling how long you could hole up in one. The vaults were nothing more than a hole in the ground for rich folks to hide in while the rest of the world burned. Number five, Rataway versus Prussian Blue. Yeah, you don't have to have any vials, do you? <laughs> Just one little puff and I'll be back on my feet. You don't look for it. In both the Fallout universe and in ours, radiation exposure can be fatal. But in Fallout, it's a much more solvable problem. Pop some Radex to shield yourself from rads and rat away to heal any exposure. Easy. Nice way to live. It is. Real life, by contrast, is more complicated. Although there are some options. Iodine tablets are like our version of Radex, saturating the thyroid gland with stable iodine so that the uptake of radioactive iodine isotopes can be prevented. Prussian blue, on the other hand, is basically paint. It also binds to cesium and thallium isotopes in the intestines, however, preventing absorption by organ tissues. Unfortunately, iodine and Prussian blue don't always work and can't prevent all types of radiation or large quantities. They're a little like what we see in Fallout, but nowhere near as reliable. Prussian blue only removes radioactive cesium and thallium from the body. It does not remove other radioactive material or prevent external radiation exposure. Number four, superhuman strength. Much like Captain America and the MCU, the weird science of Fallout can grant ex-vault dwellers and couriers superhuman strength. I'm fine. I'm fine. You had a rotten human tooth lodged on your shoulder. You're not fine. Unfortunately, outside of the game, human beings are limited by both physiology and physics. Where do you guys get your power from? Our muscles are constrained by the size and number of muscle fibers, the efficiency of our nervous system, and the availability of energy. All of which means that even the best athletes and the world's strongest people have physical limits. You can raise those limits to a degree through long-term training and enhancements, but realistic muscle growth and performance can only be pushed so far. And more importantly, real non-fallout humans are creatures of bones, ligaments, and tendons. Even with musculature capable of enhanced feet, then our joints can only allow so much. You happen to be a doctor, would you? Because I happen to be looking for one. Number three, cryonics. The pod will decontaminate and depressurize you before we head deeper in the wall. In the world of Fallout, Vault Tech was a leader in many scientific fields, including cryonics. Vault dwellers and executives alike managed to escape the Great War of 2077 by freezing themselves for centuries in a secure vault. More broadly, cryostasis is a cornerstone of speculative science fiction, theoretically allowing humans to outlive disease and travel in deep space. The real science behind the practice is still in its infancy. Cryonics is really an extension of emergency medicine. And we've yet to evolve the technology beyond its most important hurdle. Freezing, especially over the long term, damages tissue. Cells are disrupted and the liquid in the body crystallizes. And people don't just wake up from that. Cryonics will only be possible if and when researchers either find a way to prevent this damage or discover a form of revival that repairs it. A lot of people say, what happens if the power goes out? The answer is absolutely nothing because no energy is needed to maintain the temperature. Number two, advanced robotics. So you guys use pre-war technology to find and collect pre-war technology to make sure no one has pre-war technology? I mean, yeah, well, 
When you say it like that, I mean, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's weird. Despite its mid-century modern aesthetic, the technology of Fallout is both futuristic and, at times, awe-inspiring. Before the Great War, humanity had reached an apex in the field of robotics. Combat robots like Assaultrons terrorize the battlefield, while suburban families rely on Mr. Handy for household chores. Welcome. What the fudge? Fudge? There's no fudge here. Only a General Atomics International Mark IV. That's what I am. You seem to be a woman. And that may indeed be what our future holds in this world as well. Yes, for now, engineers are still working on ways for robots to navigate simple obstacles like stairs, but rapidly advancing models are expected. As with many technologies, the robots in Fallout have a ready supply of fuel, often nuclear in nature. That part may be different in real life, with the powering of domesticated and combat robots more likely to resemble charging an electric vehicle. Perhaps they would struggle in a real-life apocalypse, but they are on their way all the same. What? No! What a disgusting idea! <laughs> I'm simply going to harvest your organs! Huh? Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Wildlife it just occurred to me, uh, we're definitely picking up an abomination of some kind or another. I'm just not sure. I'm not sure we're tracking the right abomination. One rare bit of good news about the Fallout games and their relation to what would really happen is that they generally misunderstand the length of time it takes for nuclear fallout to dissipate. Really think you should go home. You are not safe here. That's what people keep telling me. While the soil and local animal life would absorb lethal doses of radiation in the short term, it perhaps wouldn't take centuries to vanish, as it does in the game. In fact, and circumstances depending, it could be that much of the worst radiation would vanish in days or even in hours, more widely and perhaps a few years or a couple of decades. All of which means that wildlife would eventually return in abundance and without extra heads. Chernobyl is a real-life example. In the years since the infamous nuclear meltdown, local plants and animals have flourished, the soil is rich, the landscapes are pristine, and thankfully, there isn't a single rad roach in sight. Please, no, 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 not from there! No. What do you think about the science of Fallout? Has it helped you to get hooked? Let us know in the comments below. Listen, I don't know who you are or how you know the things that you do, but you are going to get across that wasteland. And we're going to do it together. Okay? That's a promise. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.